Patrick Gadara, good morning. Good morning. It's good to have you again on the show. Uh, it's good to be here. Yes, after the election. Mm-hmm. Has your ink dried off or was it peeled oh. off or has it... You still have the ink? Um, yeah, I didn't vote, so... Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Opening <laughs> statement. Hey, Patrick. <laughs> yeah, I've been mean, always open. I mean, uh, I, 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 didn't, I didn't bother too much. Too much. Why? Yeah. Um... Well, my reason is basically that I think there is too much emphasis I put on, that, that we put on elections. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I think that what really matters is um, the, the, what happens in the years in between elections and not really the election itself. Um, the election is just a device for appointing politicians to power. Mm-hmm. You know, it benefits politicians. It's not really an exercise for us. You know, um, and I think it's more what we do to hold these people we elect to account mm-hmm. in the five years that mm-hmm. are there. Um, that's more important. That's not to say voting is bad. You know, um, uh, whoever wants to vote, they always say, yeah, fine, go ahead, do it. Mm-hmm. You know, but I would, I think we've put so much emphasis on sort of exercising your democratic right um, uh, on election day mm-hmm. that to some extent I feel like we... We, we kind of de-emphasize mm. the real work of democracy, which is in between uh, elections. Mm. Holding them to account. Uh, explain that a little bit more, mm. the in-between. Well, um, when, w- when you, whoever it is that you elect to power, mm. you know, um, the expectation that they'll be, what, quote-unquote, good leaders or they'll deliver their promises, um, I think our history shows that that's not the case. You can't rely on it, you mm. know. You've got to push them to do it. You've got to stop them actually um, going uh, uh, contrary to the agreements that we have in our constitution, our expectations that we have for them. You know, we always see every time we put people in, they very quickly start trying to roll back our uh, 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 our freedoms, um, uh, our opportunities, etc. You know, um, And the way I see, I think of democracy is not so much as a system for electing rulers or for appointing rulers. It's a system for people ruling themselves, so people participating in their everyday decision making, you know. And I think that's what we need to be pushing for, you know, um, uh, where the things that matter to you, you know, you don't wait for them to be delivered by a politician, you know. Mm -hmm. It's actually you take up a stand and you go out and you push them to actually do it. Mm. So do I hear you to be saying that instead of the slew of promises that politicians make every electoral cycle, the sort of leader that perhaps one ought to look for is the sort of leader who campaigns by seeking to strengthen the power of the voter? Um, I First, I would say I, I don't look for leaders. I don't think we should be looking for leaders. What should we do? Um, these people are people we give jobs. So their jobs are to represent. Their jobs are to um, uh, uh, articulate policies, you know, um, uh, essentially do what we have hired them to do. But isn't I don't it, think isn't, for isn't me it, that it, is... Leadership. I, no, I don't think but so. Is, re- um, is representation not leadership? Not really. An what MP is, is just an MP. Is just a, I mean, if I asked you go represent me in some forum, I'm not asking you to lead me. You in know, fact, it's, it's the other way around. You, know, that, you that, should follow that, my that lead. You, you've determined to demean my position this morning. <laughs> <laughs> no, not no, really. I, I, I see you. I see you. But <laughs> your point is well made. But again, so that we don't dwell on semantics, Right. in all honesty, even if we appoint, we collectively mm-hmm. decide, have we then not surrendered, if only in small part, some of the things that, that constitute our rights to this person to represent us? No, we don't surrender anything to them. Oh. Um, these people are there to do our bidding. Really? You know, that's what we hire them to do. They're there to do our bidding. Mm. You know, and... That's my point. In fact, um, uh, to go back to the whole issue of elections mm. is um, we hire them to do a job. You know, um, the act of hiring for me is not as important as whether the jobs actually get done in the five years and how we can hold them to account to it. And then more importantly, we are not giving up our uh, 
our rights our sovereignty to, mm. yeah to to make decisions to to be consulted you know on the things that uh, uh, that matter to us okay. you know and i think that that's where our focus really should be uh, can, if know? i stick on that point kathara if you're saying that the act of of selecting this individual who will do this job right. is not as important as holding them accountable right yes, as pushing them and participating in the process. right in yes. what you're saying so then where is the importance of the who of of the who does the job because i mean you could pick anybody pick anybody then to just do it and then because what you're saying is then that you can now push a person you can mold a person into getting them to do the right yeah. thing so it, it, from what you're saying yeah, is that it doesn't not, matter who gets into the position, doesn't matter who that individual is, it can be anybody. So long as then now you do this important activity of between the selection periods, molding and pushing and holding this person accountable into what they must do. Um, I think it it's it's not immaterial, mm. but it is not the most important consideration. I mean. Um, uh, 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 if you look at how democracy was run, actually. Uh, uh, by the Greeks before they had a system called sortition, which was basically a casting of lots, you know, over who would rule, mm. you know. Um, and the idea, I think, behind that is that if we are saying people can rule themselves, then whoever it is you put in there should be able to, I mean, they should be able to mold him, as you say, to do your bidding. You see, it's, it's not for me, it's, about, it's not about electing uh, a ruler. You know, that's, that's, that's not what I, say, uh, uh, I think democracy is about. And, and, and another thing is um, when we focus on the who, yes, if you get a, a guy who doesn't want to uh, oppress you to take away your freedoms, then you probably have an easier time, mm. Mm. you know. But the fact is you are, you're not always going to get that guy. You know, um, uh, a corollary to that you can think of is this argument guys have always said that all we need is benevolent dictators. And you get a benevolent guy, you're fine, you're good. But if you don't get a benevolent one, you know, <laughs> you are in real problems, you know. And so for me, it's actually much better to focus on how you are able to hold people who have power to, uh, to account rather than to be too sort of focused on who they are. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, an American uh, chappy uh, called Wendell Phillips who said that um, uh, uh, the people who, uh, that who are elected to power are the necessary enemies of the people. That just the fact that they wield power, you know, mm -hmm. they become the people that then you've got to fight. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter whether he was a nice guy before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, once he's in there, as we have seen actually in our own experience in Kenya, all these good guys we keep voting in and then they turn out to be monsters you know but but this but, but this narrative of leadership it's something that we ourselves seem to talk about and we seem to forward it endlessly endlessly rather mm -hmm. so does it therefore mean that when one is chosen from among us what they then go and do is portray what it is that we actually expect um no um, uh, first, they really do what we expect and what we want, which is then why we need to hold them to account. Um, and secondly, if you look at elections, at, uh, um, and this is across the world, not just in Kenya, they really produce people who are quote unquote representative. You know, MPs tend to be on in 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 in, uh, uh, in the main tend to be wealthier, better educated than the. Uh, uh, represent th th than the um, populations that they are said to represent. You know, many times when you, uh, uh, and you can look at this, you know, uh, as I said, across the world, you know, it's the same. They re very rarely look like the guys who they say they are going to represent, mm -hmm. you know. And, and so when you say that when they are acting there, they are acting in the same way as I would, it is, see, uh, I would question whether that's actually true. What I'm actually saying is, consider why it is those who elect them choose them. Well, for, for a variety of reasons. Yes, you know. but that But that's not them. necessarily meaning that those people... I mean, so, mm. uh, if you elect an MP like Babu, you know, mm. you know who's uh, 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 known for shooting DJs in nightclubs, <laughs> you know, 
I, I mean, was, I don't I think thought, the I idea was, is that you... No, no, you, you uh, Gadara, you, you, I thought there was one incident of one DJ who was shot. Well, by him. Yes, <laughs> but when you say shooting DJs, it's like his pastime. He goes from nightclub to nightclub All looking right. for DJs to okay. shoot. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, but the fact that he goes and shoots a DJ in, in, uh, in, uh, in a nightclub... Yes. How is that something that, uh, that you can say that um, it represents what people of Mbakasi want? You okay. Know. Of course not. <laughs> so in you know, five years this guy time, goes, is this the one thing, thing that Spat you know. would say? No, no, my point is, he it goes there. It can't be a one, one instance no, that then but people would no, use I'm, I'm to say it represents that. I'm using it as an illustration mm. to simply say that the idea that people in power, uh, when they act, that they are always acting in, in ways that represent us is not true. You know, and that's what I'm, I'm, I'm disputing. And I'm saying that mm. many times, in fact, I would say the majority of times when these guys go into power, they start acting in ways that benefit them, mm. not us. You know, and that is why then we've got to be quite clear that it's not just about, it's not a fire and forget sort of thing that, oh, we put you in power, mm. then we'll see you after five years. The actual job is in between those five years. And that's so you need to So your focus to is on the accountability. On the accountability and participation. I put it to you, Gadara, that accountability say. starts at the very beginning. Accountability starts with vetting the candidate. Um, accountability would start from that point, from looking at uh, the person who is presenting themselves as, as a leader, accounting them, uh, holding them accountable for their past deeds, looking at their character, judging whether they have the capacity to um, represent you properly, and then giving them the mandate and then holding them accountable for the next five years. And I would disagree. I mean, that's fine. What I'm saying is th that aspect of holding, of, 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 of selection mm. is less, to me, is, 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 uh, is less important than what actually you do in the years that they actually wield power. Okay. You know, because what they'll tell you before you, uh, they get into power, they can have track records, they mm. can have, you know, all the things that you will use as, as, as measures. But once they start wielding power, lots of that goes away. You know, I mean, think about 2002. You know, we had people who had been detained by Moy. You know, think of people like, um, uh, what's the, uh, was it Meru governor? Um, Kiraito. Kiraito yeah, Kiraito Murungi. Mm. These are people who had bloody track records. You know, and then... Two years after he's, he's in, um, he's telling us go through the own uh, investigations. You know, the very people who exiled John Gidongo were he, the people he had been in trenches with. You know, Martha Karua, when she was uh, declaring Edward Clay persona non grata, you know, these are people with records. So if you say that all, all that matters is this vetting thing that we do, you know, once they're in power, all those bets are off. <laughs> so know. are we saying, therefore, that what we have on the pedestal and what we are now judging is the effects that power has on people? Um, yes, yeah, the effect actually that the system that we have um, has on people and what it is actually designed to do. In a very large way, uh, to a very large extent, mm. um, what we inherited at independence, that again, this is not about blaming colonials, it's just understand my argument. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> what we inherited at independence was a system for stealing. The whites did not come here to be our friends, to develop us, or whatever. They came to steal our stuff, you know. Mm. And they created a system for it. They created a government to enable them to do it. And we inherited that system. Um, and we failed or refused to reform it. The people who got it kept it in, 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 uh, intact. In fact, uh, what's his name? Uh, Githumi Gai wrote a very interesting paper in 1982, you know, where he basically argued that we tried to impose that independence, um, a, a liberal constitution on an authoritarian colonial structure. And what happened was the structure didn't change. It was the constitution that changed. That system hmm. remains still today. We are trying to impose a new constitution from 2010 on it. You know, and already we can hear with BBI ATC, people are trying to change the constitution, not the system. You know, so it's, it, I think we have to be aware that what we are doing is we are taking our very bright people in our elections, very good people, and feeding them into a rotten system. And that system is designed to corrupt them, you know, and that's, all we keep, uh, that's why we keep ending up 
with you know uh, uh, rotten fruit. Mm. Yeah. You know, if we go down history, there was a charter that the then Queen of England gave a certain company called Imperial British East mm -hmm. Africa Company. Okay. Now, before we knew of any government or anything, those are the people who first came here, yeah. ostensibly to do business, but in reality to extract. Yes. Okay. Now, this territory. I mean, this imperial. This thing is wonderful. Somebody, <laughs> God knows, eight thousand kilometers away. <laughs> Besides, <laughs> yeah, I mean, think about uh, go I mean, there. Our police <laughs> comes from IBA. Yes, you know they are mm. the guys who set it up. Yes, they are setting it up for us. <laughs> you know, mm. and unless we actually come to that realization and then we start saying, "All right, we want to change." When we passed the 2010 Constitution, you know, I think for me that was really the first time that we we we, we were thinking about what sort of system do we want that works for us. You know. Now, unfortunately, we don't internalize the, the, the sorts of institutions and ways of doing things that the Constitution um, uh, 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 requires or uh, that it wants. It's a vision. Or what is it envisioned? So I'll give you an example with the police. Um, uh, uh, we have an article, 245, that says um, the president cannot or nobody can tell the police who to go and arrest. Mm. You know, that they are operationally independent of the executive. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I, article 245, check it out. Mm. You know, and, but every day you will see Kenyatta stand up and say, oh, I ordered those guys of Kemsa to be arrested. Or oh, Matiangi will say something like so, you know. This is us when we don't then speak up of that, when we don't tell him, you sit down, shut up, that is not your job. Mm. You know, we, 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 we abandon the, that constitution, we abandon that vision. Okay. You know, I the think, real challenge. I think, to, I think sorry, we hadn't even bought ahead. into the vision ourselves when we were writing yeah. this constitution. Mm. Right. Because no sooner had we given all this work to the Gidongos and the others to mm -hmm. come up. Not, no, it wasn't Gidongos, it was uh, Hassan Omar and mm -hmm. the others to, you know, put up, put together a police service commission, uh, independently recruit mm -hmm. an inspector general of police, let them now uh, operate independently. Then we turn back on our own political leaders and ask them, How far? Yeah, surely we are being attacked at Westgate and you, our president, can't say anything. You, the interior minister cannot tell us anything about what's happening who's coordinating this who's running this who who's to blame for the mishandling of mm. all these security operations we went back to the leaders and said we want you to be answerable to us because we elected you to run a government and provide, provide a security um, which give justification for the amendments to those security laws. Um, well, I, I, I don't think it gave justification for it. And I would agree with you to the extent that um, uh, um, the design of the Constitution was something that people have actually internalized and understood. We still see it from the prism of the past. You know? mm. And I think to a large extent, even the content, contestations we have around the presidency mm. you know, today, although it's supposed to be a really sort of diminished office in the Constitution, you know, reflects that we are bringing attitudes to it, you know, that are born of our history, you mm. know, of, you know, um, uh, what we've experienced mm. the, the, the presidency to be, you know. Um, I think when it comes to... Is it, is it just the experience or the expectation? Um, I think it's experience. Um, uh, it, it takes a while. I mean, constitutions don't implement themselves, you know. Um, uh, it takes a while for people to recognize, you know, what it is. I mean, look at our judiciary. You know, it's been on a journey since 2010, you know, uh, learning to assert itself, mm -hmm. you know, what are the, uh, the things it can do, mm -hmm. you know. And 2017, for example, was a culmination, if you look back at um, uh, how laws had been struck down. Things that never used to happen, you know, prior to 2010, you know. So our judges have been learning. The population is also learning. And I think part of the job that we have, uh, even within media, mm -hmm. is to keep um, uh, uh, highlighting to people, you know, what it is this vision is, and where it is that um, uh, uh, our, our politicians, our rulers, mm. um, uh, go wrong when they, uh, uh, um, I mean, uh, when they go against it, you know. And I think when we keep quiet about it, 
you know, um, uh, then people don't get the opportunity to learn, mm. to internalize. You know, it's going to be a journey. It's going to be a while. You know, and 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 and, and um, I recognize that, but I still think mm. that um, it is uh, something that we need to keep pushing on. You know, uh, and 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 to keep. Um, educating mm. you know uh, uh, the population sure. about what the expectation is when it comes to you know how people in particular offices should uh, should act what are their powers what are they you know what are they not allowed to do you know and pointing it out whenever they go uh, contrary to that 20 half past seven Patrick Adara is the curator of the elephant he's here with us in the studio he's one of the 7.9 million who did not vote <laughs> in this general election <laughs> we've talked about them we have one of them specimen in the studio to tell us why also looking at the lessons that uh, can be taken by the media and other stakeholders from this election how it was covered how it was managed how uh, communication came from the iebc from the polling stations from the telling centers from the uh, electoral observers across the board what lessons do we take from this let's take a quick break we'll be back shortly this is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. We're talking about the election, the aftermath, the lessons, the media and other stakeholders could learn out of this. Ndu, mm. you had a question for Patrick. Right, so I mean, even as looking at this, Patrick, and saying then coming off of yet another election, mm -hmm. which, you know, unfortunately has, and probably even before that, you had a polarized country when it was, you know, making certain decisions. What would you say? coming to the point that you were making just before you went to break mm. and saying, look, we have to keep these conversations alive. Otherwise, we get to a point where maybe you have an almost reticent electorate whereby just, okay, well, let's just kind of go along with things because we don't want a situation whereby, you know, <laughs> things are going to get messy. So let's just take things as they come, mm. right? Uh, how do you keep these conversations alive? In the midst of what we are currently in, we've got, you know, one side of the divide going to the Supreme Court today. We've got another side of the divide saying, uh, well, you know what, we want and we're going ahead. We've got the majority of the electorate today who've not made a decision, who've decided, and I'm saying of those registered to vote, mm -hmm. they made the decision to register to vote, mm -hmm. but they did not. And that's the majority numbers that we're looking at today if we're going to go by the numbers that we've been given, right? The majority of those registered to vote did not make a decision. Well, I'm, I'm not sure that that's true. I mean, you have uh, more numbers. If you have 14 uh, you, million who voted out of 22, you have so. more numbers people who did not vote than the one who said that the for the ones that we have has won the election. Yes, I mean, okay? uh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, clearly. So now, how do we keep that conversation alive of the things that you're talking about today? Mm -hmm. How do we keep the conversation alive and say, look, folks, essentially be woke about some of the mm -hmm. things that are necessary to keep a developing economy going, to keep a developing leadership and governance and trans transparency mm -hmm. and accountability. How do you keep that going in the midst of some of the things that we're seeing that's come off, off from August 9th? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the, the the first thing is simply to uh, um, uh, to educate the population about what's uh, what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, I think w one of the things that r was really highlighted by this election is that lots of guys did not understand what uh, you know w what's what's this process that we have. And I think it's very good that we got all these forms up, etc. That we had a bit of transparency that guys could actually see. This is how it works. That you could have debates about 34 C's and 34 B and 34 A, mm. you know, and what leads to what, you know. And I was quite enthused by that. I thought that was people starting to sort of internalize, you know, how does the system actually work? Because if they are to participate in it, then they, they really should know, hmm. you know. I don't think it's a problem um, having somebody challenging uh, 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 a result in court. Sure. You know, we've Maybe had even it. encouraged. Yeah. In yeah. fact, we've had it the, the last three election cycles. I mean, the, the last two and now this one, <laughs> you know. So it's not anything new. And I love it that it is, lots of times this is actually broadcast. It's, it's, it's live. You're watching. You're hearing the arguments. Mm. Now, unfortunately, because it's a courtroom, a lot of it is legalese, you know, and I would hope that rather than simply repeat the sort of uh, 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 the legal language that's, that's in the courtroom, mm. that uh, the media this time will actually try and explain, you mm. know, these are the, this is what the allegation actually is in everyday language, this is what these guys are saying. 
I like that it is challenged. I think there's two outcomes, that obviously, <coughs> that we will get. Um, uh, either it's upheld or it's um, uh, nullified. Uh, it's nullified. Um, I think if it is upheld, it's going to be a really good... Um, it's going to set a standard, you know, in essence, mm. um, uh, for, 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 for this country and I think probably for the region. That elections going forward, there's an element of transparency we are going to expect of the IEBC. Mm. You know, in the same way, 2017 nullification set a standard. You know, there's certain shenanigans well, that basically, uh, you know, even the IEBC knows if you do them, you know, they're going to go. So this time you're not hearing talks of servers and, you know, and all of that. And I know with the court cases yet to come, mm. you know. But I think there has been some deterrent already from the 2017 election, you know, that say there's, there's a standard be below which we cannot go. I think if this is upheld, um, uh, uh, it's going to, end, to lay out a standard of transparency mm. um, uh, that will make sure that we don't have uh, the sorts of shenanigans we're used to at election time. Mm. The other thing is, if it is nullified, given that the IBC had sort of made this big deal of transparency, my fear is that if it is nullified, then people will sort of say that, I mean, what's the point of, of all this transparency? Of all the transparency. You know, and so it's really important that we start explaining what are the issues that are at stake and mm. why that transparency, even if this is nullified, mm. why it will still be important to insist on it in future elections. It's interesting that you say that because last week CT was of the opinion, I, I think he's still of the opinion, not mm -hmm. just last week, but even now, that you know, all this legalese and all of this language needs to be broken down for everybody to understand yes. exactly what is going on because then moving forward, you will then be able, if even if you're not using it to make an informed decision, mm -hmm. you then have a psychological situation whereby you are aware of exactly what is going on, the questions that are being asked on a regular basis. All right, so then what does this mean? And does the chairperson actually have the right to make a decision on his own? Mm -hmm. Or are we talking about declaration? Oh my God, what's the difference between a declaration <laughs> right. and a decision? <laughs> or what is corporate consensus? What? what are we talking about here? A repetition of consonants, it mm -hmm. just seems like that's what we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. But breaking it down then gives everybody the opportunity to be in the same playing field so we get it yeah and i think what it can do is it can allow us to, to build consensus about the sort of system we want you know and that system is not sort of i mean you, you, the lawyers will come and define it sort of in the same way you can get an architect to sort of draw you a house but in mm. general you should know what you want mm -hmm. you know um and i think for us, it's about understanding the system that we have. Does it actually suit to serve our needs? You know, and that comes from I think us understanding what that system is. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, and you know what the lawyers do though is good for us in that, depending on which side of the divide they represent. Again, it is an opportunity for us to understand mm -hmm. just a the vagaries of the law. Mm -hmm issues surrounding it, mm -hmm. positions that people take. It, it's an educative system. Yeah. But, it, but in that same vein, if you look at the electoral processes that this country has had and the corruption therein, mm -hmm. we also see the evolving nature of that corruption and how sophisticated it comes with every election. Mm -hmm. So that where previously there was suggestions and innuendos of ballot stuffing, where... Well, use your imagination. <laughs> Votes, ballot box, stuffed. Okay? Right. Then we even had a system that we refer to as Mlolongo, where people form queues. I mean, this is the evolutionary process right. of our electoral system, mm -hmm. where the district commissioner was a returning officer, and he was a government. I mean, all these things. Even when we get to a system now where we're talking about an electronic system, mm -hmm. therein, so long as there are human beings involved, mm -hmm their intentions will always be manifest in one way or the other within mm -hmm. that system. Right. Mm -hmm. It's still part of the evolutionary mm -hmm. process. However, the thing that politicians need, well, they want to do it, but they seem to want to convince us is that at some point, one side is actually better than the other. And that one side is devoid of what they're accusing the other of. <laughs> uh, I mean... We know this is not true. <laughs> you know, <laughs> lots of these guys are just switch positions. Yep. You know, they've each been accused of, of pretty much the same thing. You mm. know, um, I think that for me, it's uh, if we understand the system and if we make the system more transparent, so people can actually see how it works. 
you know, um, uh, people can understand what are the various um, things that they should expect. In the end, we are going to be the people who safeguard it. You know, it's not going to be the lawyers. Mm. You know, it's going to be us who sit back and say, this matters to me. So therefore, I don't want A, B, C, D happening. Mm. You know, uh, it is we can put pressure um, uh, uh, on, 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 on the people who hold power so that things work as they're supposed to. But, but, but unfortunately, we, uh, let me just finish one thing, especially yes. on uh, like for the IEBC, um, for example. Um, I think the transparency that we saw after voting day, you know, was sorely lacking before voting day, you know. And I think that they, there wasn't much sort of um, effort to explain to people that this is what we are doing. Yeah. This is how we are preparing for, you know, what are the gaps there? What are the issues, you know, so that we, you know, we, when we go and participate in this exercise, you know, we know what's, what, you know, what, what, what to expect. Um, I'm hoping that this time we're going to start early, you know. I would rather that we start talking about the electoral system. All the issues that you're going to hear at the Supreme, uh, at the Supreme Court in the next uh, two weeks are going to include issues that we should have handled, you know, from before. Debates that Between we Between December should, yeah, and August. You know, that we shouldn't have waited, you mm. know, but, but till Galera, the election is upon Galera, us to start talking about we what didn't register actually, are we no, using. But, uh, you know, excuse uh, me, we didn't actually wait. Issues to do with the conduct of IBC and how they go about their business... They have been in the public domain. The debates have been there. Questions have been asked. The only thing is IBC doesn't respond when you ask <laughs> questions. We, we, we ourselves have asked many questions. But this um, doesn't seem to be this way. Oh, um, actually, can this be explained? Actually, um, uh, if, if you look at what... The, uh, so, for example, we went into this election essentially with the same set of rules that we went uh, with in 2017 that had resulted in the problems in 2017. Lots of the things that I'm hearing now that uh, if you assume the reporting is, uh, uh, is accurate, that are going to be raised at the Supreme Court are going to be things that were raised before there, you know. So we haven't actually fixed much, you no. know. And, and my point, and that's my point, mm. is that we, and, and this, this, there's a sort of a culture of doing this. Mm. Um, uh, if you look all the way back to 92, 97, we always had this idea of minimum reforms to just get to the elections. And after the elections, we don't actually go and do the comprehensive bit. We don't. You know, we sit back, we wait till the next election is upon us, and then we start talking about registers and rules and procurement and all because of this. Because the political class is not yeah, interested Yeah, the political in class is reforms. not interested in a free and fair election. They're interested in an election they can manipulate. Yes. That's what they want. Yes, precisely. You know, now, if that so, is the case, but then... what I'm saying is then it is us to defend the system because yeah, we okay. want a free and fair one. Okay. Yeah. You know, so it's then us to get involved and to push that in this uh, period. When you say involved, how you then? Know, so by, you know, whether it's um, uh, uh, pushing your MP, your representative, you know, making clear to him that this is an issue that matters to you, that you want to see um, uh, 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 within Parliament's calendar, let's sort this thing out. You mm. know, it's media making that an agenda, not waiting for the, when the politicians will decide it's important. Mm. You know, it's us insisting, no, it's important. It's got to be something that's got to be dealt. It's people who, activists who will go to the streets or people who will write articles mm. or whatever. We put pressure on them. You know, in the same way, uh, if you remember the whole, <coughs> in the 90s when we had the whole talk of reform, this wasn't something that just came from politicians. Sure. You know, we pushed for it. Mm. So we have various ways. Elections are just one way of participating. We have very many other ways that we can participate and push um, our, our representative to actually do our bidding. And that's why I would, I would hope that in the five years in between, that's where our focus is. Mm. You, know? you know, when we talk of transparency, I, I am of this mind. Are we talking about a transparency that actually was or the appearance of it? Well, we'll see when the court case comes, whether <laughs> what we were shown was basically uh, uh, to Lifumbo Macho, you know, or it was a real transparency. You know, that's, that's, that's going to be tested at the Supreme Because court. the narrative of you know. transparency, if you ask me, mm -hmm. is what dominated the airwaves. I mean, yes, it's transparent, it's transparent, it's transparent. Mm -hmm. You can say, so until you believe, you can say it as much as you want. But there were but elements of transparency. There were well, elements of But that's going to be tested now. Exactly. That's the thing. That's, the that's, that's going to be the value yes. of, 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 of the court case. It's mm -hmm. going to test that, 
that presumption that there was transparency mm. Mm. you know and i'm really hoping that it upholds that there was transparency mm. sure you know because then that as i said before is going to set a standard you know uh, uh, uh for everything else but i mm. think we also have to think about when we saw the transparency that was just after voting day mm. why didn't we have transparency before before okay. you know, like, like we should have had a clear calendar everybody should have known right we expect you know, the first batch of ballot boxes to arrive mm. on a certain date weeks in advance right you know second batch comes here and then this is what will happen if we are going to use that manual register mm. or not yeah if the kids all those kids rules should be agreed not. on way before we get to polling day yeah right. you know but in this case we even had the courts changing uh rules you know days hours before days. yeah you know to uh, a day to the election you know which is not helpful at all yeah mm. you know so i think again we start early we push early you know so mm. are those things that are agreed by the time we get to the next one so now this maybe then comes full circle what you were saying as the that it is what happens in between yeah. the selection is what is more important than mm. the day because really what are we looking at months we're just looking at months yeah. uh, between when these new individuals or even the same individuals are chosen again during an electoral you know during an election mm -hmm. uh, process but then what you said also, I think uh, I'd like to stick on for a moment, is that then is it then not possible that it is just going to be a few who will carry a reform agenda? It is not possible to have an entire nation's population carry this reform agenda, to carry on these activities. You may have it over time, but initially, I mean, we, we saw a time where civil society was <laughs> vibrant and robust mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. carrying, but it was not all of civil society. It was not the entire yeah. population. You will have sections, even the media that we talk about, that is absolutely necessary mm -hmm. to have, to, to, to make the issue an agenda. It's interesting mm -hmm. that you said that. To make these issues, make it the agenda. It is actually not possible to have the entire population walking in one mm. direction at the same time right. at once. So then what are we saying? That it is necessary to have folks who will stand up and say, look, this, we should, we need to make it agenda mm -hmm. and then get people to latch onto it later because you have people uh, patrick who unfortunately are not plugged in mm -hmm. at that time they could be later but you will not be able to have everybody plugged in to the same agenda at mm -hmm. the same time no i agree um and this brings me to an uh, 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 another point about this sort of focus we have on election mm. um we've denuded the spaces that are outside the state um, the centers of power that are outside the state that can then do these sorts of mobilization yeah. um, if you think of 2002 for example we basically decapitated civil society and put them all in government you know and then we had a period where civil society join us so we can was, weaken you yeah <laughs> you know and you, you you can see this sort of trend that when people are effective in spaces that are outside government, we very quickly try and co-opt them into government. So Wangari Mathai, very good as an uh, environmental activist, Nobel Prize winner, ATC, we push her into government, you know, where she starts defending um, the corruption in, uh, uh, in Kibaki's uh, uh, government, you know. We don't keep them. Boniface Mwangi, very good as an activist, we just become an MP, you know. Um, he had the standard, you had... Uh, um, uh, Mohaji Chopevu, you know, mm -hmm. fantastic as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, do you know what you're actually saying? You know, you're saying that all these activists are rent seekers, that they take a position to oppose the government because it's the thing to do. And then when people give them the task that they've been garnering for, <laughs> say, okay, you've said you're a champion. Yeah. Okay. Now get in there and champion for us. Yeah. And then they change. So essentially you're saying, yeah. No, the, the whatever position they took no 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 was uh, to get them was a means to an well, end yes exactly that, well i have to say <laughs> i have to say this i have to say this i'm not saying that the, what they were doing was um uh, was it disingenuous mm -hmm. my point is they were effective where they were you know and that we have to understand this system you know that uh, where you've got many different you know um uh, 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 checks and uh, 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 institutions, you know, and these institutions are not all inside the state, mm. you know, they're not all in parliament. That <laughs> it is very valuable to have a powerful, strong media. It's very po uh, important to have a vibrant civil society, sure. and that. When you have a guy from civil society who then stands up and says, "You know, I'm, I'm really effective at that. Let me get into parliament," you should think, 
what is my interest as, as, as a Kenyan, as a citizen? I know he wants to be in parliament. I know he'd like maybe the salary of parliament and he thinks he can make a difference there. But perhaps it is better for me, for that guy to stay out there. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what I would prefer. This thing that when we feed our best and brightest always into government. And we have seen the results that we get yeah. when, when we do that. But does it not speak to <laughs> you know, the, you know, the character of these individuals? You know, because we, the same argument I think has been it speaks forwarded. to the system. When you've got, when you've got something... They're sold up by the system. When you've got uh, 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 basically like a uniform outcome, mm. you know, it keeps happening. Then at some point you will say, it's not the people that we are putting in that are all uniformly bad actors. You know, but there's something about the system that we have that corrupts them. There's you something know, about our people that makes them susceptible it. to corruption. Because or, you can't um, say no, can't you? Yes, Sarah? I mean, you can, can, you can, can you someone can stand invite, up and just say no? Sure. You can invite um, the same things that you're uh, saying. Again, uh, this, uh, this expectation, <laughs> uh, and, and, and I find it uh, uh, a bit strange. Hmm. Um, uh, this expectation that people will just say no. You know, oh, hmm. that's all they need to do. Hmm. Kind of ignores how we work as human beings, mm. you know. Um, uh, we respond to incentives, you know. We respond, we respond to stimuli. Yeah. I mean, uh, you give them, you, you give people gaps. So if, <laughs> if, for example, today you say there are no cops okay. in the street, uh. you know, uh, nobody is going to be arrested for committing crimes. What do you think will happen? You know, so you've got to, we know this. This is how people work. You know, so my thing is, since we know if system, we put them in there, this is what we are going to get. The citizens or the police service? Well, the police service probably. <laughs> but <laughs> citizens, if they don't have the deterrent of what happens. You, you if, know this if, argument, if, what, if, what I like if, uh, about it. Uh, when you commit a crime, I've, I've um, I think you're going to find many more crimes are so, committed. So Patrick, if we were to go with your <laughs> argument, then we should say that Raila Dinga should stop trying to be president and just remain in the opposition. Because well, that's the role he plays. Again, well. if we think that he's What's more in the useful best to us, of you as a yeah, Kenyan? Of, if we think he's, our best interest is for him to stay there, keep him there, <laughs> you know, that's my thing. You know, he can run if he wants to, but I wouldn't vote for him. <laughs> you know, to say, all right, you become. Because if I think it's in my interest for him to stay outside, if we want a strong civil society, stop electing civil society activists into parliament, keep them. Uh, within civil society, in mm. fact, make it more lucrative for them to stay, to stay there. In the civil society. You know, because that's where you need them. That's where you want them. Mm. When we we when we keep feeding guys into into the state, we just keep creating monsters. You know, and that's that's what we've been doing for what nearly sixty years. <laughs> you know, all these guys used to be very nice guys. <laughs> you know, many of them. You know, when they came into power, when they used to say nice things. You mm. know, when they fought for our freedoms. You know. But once they get into power, you know, it's a completely different they get into that system. They are no longer as outspoken. As ah, they yeah. Are. And not because just outspoken, just given... they, became, they become the very thing they were fighting. Facilitate. <laughs> what <laughs> reality do they encounter when they get into this thing we keep referring to as the system? What is it that they see that makes them A lack them of accountability. The belly of the beasts. A, a lack of accountability. <laughs> Suddenly your roads are being cleared for you. Your kids are being taken to nice You're schools. You're given a monster being of a vehicle given and driver. All that it gives you a real incentive to stay in there. You know, and not, forget, not, not, so not so forget <laughs> the uncomfortability that you've got. <laughs> yeah, so you know, my rent, my rent seeking don't get that, isn't really far off, is it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so if we provide them with all of that, then... I mean, the, the result for it mm. is, 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 is going to be obvious. You can more or less anticipate it, you know. And to a large extent, that's why it's there. When, you remember that guy who walked in, in Meru in 2017, mm. who went around looking for votes? Yes. Um, uh, the first thing Kenyatta did was give him a prado. You yep. know, you are now one of us, <laughs> not one of them. <laughs> you know? And then suddenly, his own constituents, when they went to see him, were being beaten up by bodyguards. <laughs> you know? So we've got to, these are incentives that we create in the system. That behavior, um, as uh, uh, it's called uh, Dona Meadows, I think, um, uh, said a system creates its own behavior. You know, and that's what we are having. Mm. We are having a system that is generating this behavior, and we keep mm. feeding people into it, expecting a different outcome. Why do we speak <laughs> of this system as though it's devoid of human influence? 
as though it's it's like no, some I mean, artificial it, intelligence that has acquired its <laughs> own properties and its own humaneness or humanness so that it can decide things by the way that portion of scripture you quoted was Ecclesi- ecclesiastes oh okay chapter 9 verse 4 <laughs> the one about the it lion. is better to be a live dog than a dead than a dead lion yes precisely yeah. mm. um i think for me the 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 way i understand the system is not divo- it's, it's 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 how all these cogs um uh, uh work together to produce an outcome you know so that includes the people in there mm. that includes the the rules that you have that includes um the sorts of institutions that you you know the norms the cultures etc all that is part of it you know and we've got to be thinking what's the culture within the state mm. you know what do we have there so we get okay um tata is now a senator you know do we expect that he will be he can be going to court to challenge <laughs> you know, the work of parliament or, or he will be representing the county uh, yes. you know <laughs> and, and and not just that he becomes muheshimiwa mm. suddenly mm. people count out to you you know all of this and you get real advantages so you will always when, when moha was saying that he's going to be a strong uh, investigative parliamentarian or whatever mm. that was always going to be rubbish you know it's nothing <laughs> once you're in it you know, you're one of them <laughs> you know <laughs> rubbish thank you okay. you know i mean so, uh, <laughs> you can look at what we got you know uh, uh, after <laughs> he's <you> back <laughs> patrick adara is a curator <laughs> with the elephant is an award winning cartoonist as well thank you very much for joining us always a pleasure having you Always a pleasure being here. <laughs> This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day.